Hi, I'm Jim Dennison with Dennison Forum, and this is a daily article special edition for Friday, April 16th, 2021. The title is Mass Shooting at a FedEx Facility in Indianapolis, Five Promises We Can Claim and Pray. Eight people were shot and killed, several others injured Thursday night in a mass shooting at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department officer Janae Cook told a media briefing that the scene was an active shooter situation when officers arrived just after 11 p.m. local time. Police reported that the alleged shooter, quote, has taken his own life. Multiple victims were transported to various hospitals in the area. One person was in critical condition, according to police. Cook told the media briefing, this is a site that no one should see. The identity and motive of the shooter have not been released as of this hour, nor have the names of the victims been publicly released. At this moment, as I'm recording this, 46,500 people have died so far today. By the time you hear or see these words, the number will have continued to escalate. Death is a present reality every day we live. For example, on this day in 2017, a college senior killed 32 people on the campus of Virginia Tech before taking his own life. On this day in 2014, the South Korean ferry seawall capsized and sank, killing 304 people, most of whom were high school students. On this day in 2011, a Taliban sleeper agent detonated a vest of explosives hidden under his uniform, killing six American soldiers, four Afghan soldiers, and an interpreter. On this day in 1947, a ship carrying ammonium nitrate blew up in the harbor in Texas City, Texas. A nearby ship carrying ammonium nitrate and sulfur caught fire and exploded the following day. The blasts and fires killed nearly 600 people. And on this day in 1945, a Soviet submarine in the Baltic Sea torpedoed and sank the MV Goya, which Germany was using to transport civilian refugees and wounded soldiers. It's estimated that up to 7,000 people died. These calamities from the past remind us that every day could be our last day. Tragedies such as the FedEx shooting especially affect us because they strike close to home. While we don't know the motive of the shooter at this time, we do know that what happened at the FedEx building could happen nearly anywhere to nearly anyone, including you and me. Does God's word offer us help and hope as we respond to yet another mass shooting and as we face our own mortality? The Bible explains crimes such as the FedEx shooting as the tragically sinful misuse of human freedom that began in the Garden of Eden and continues today. It promises God's presence and empathy with all who suffer as a result of such sin or any other calamity in this fallen world. It calls God's people to be his instruments of intercession, compassion, and ministry for those affected by such tragedy. However, God's word does not tell us why innocent people are so often the victims of sin or calamity that is not their fault. I don't know why my father died from heart disease at the age of 55 or why my oldest son had to suffer from cancer. A FedEx employee told reporters after the shooting, quote, thank God for being here because I thought I was going to get shot. My question is, what of those who were shot? I do not know why the innocent victims of this tragedy had to suffer and die. I do not know why some survived and others did not. But there is much that I do know that is relevant for us today. I read daily from a book called Daily Light for Every Day, a compilation of biblical readings by Anne Graham Lutz and writes these words in the foreword. Without fail, these verses selected for a particular day's reading seem to speak specifically to that day's needs. In fact, God has spoken to me more often through the verses in daily light than through any other book except the Bible. After reading this morning of the tragedy in Indianapolis, I read verses in her volume for today that teach these life principles. One, we can speak to God honestly about our fear, confusion, and doubts. David told the Lord in Psalm 69 too, I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. Like David, we can name our pain and tell God all about it. Two, we can know that God hears us when we call. David testified in Psalm 31, 22, I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight, but you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. God hears us when we do not hear him. Three, we can fight fear with faith. 
The writer of Lamentations said it, Lamentations 3, 54 to 57. Water closed over my head. I said, I am lost. I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help. You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. He offers us the same assurance today. For when we struggle to find hope in the present, we can remember God's faithfulness in the past. The psalmist asked in Psalm 77, verses 7 and 9, Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then he responded in verses 10 and 11. I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. How has God been faithful to us in the past? Since Malachi 3.6 says that he does not change, we can claim his faithfulness today. And then five, we can trust God for a better future in the midst of present tragedy. David testified in Psalm 27, 13, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. John 10, 29 says, we're the children of God. Nothing can take us from his omnipotent hand. So we can claim David's promise today. I invite you to make these promises yours wherever you need the assurance of God's love and grace in your life today. Then please join me in praying for the victims of the FedEx shooting and their families. Pray that God's Spirit working through God's people will make these promises real and relevant to them. Pray for them to have the faith to believe that God is redeeming this tragedy in ways we may see and ways we may not see on this side of eternity. God's Word calls us in Romans 12, 15 to weep with those who weep. In Hebrews 7, 25, we learn that our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. In John eleven thirty five, 35, we learn that he grieves with those who grieve. He's grieving even right now. Let's join him on our knees.